luxury addicts out there that love shopping vlogs, bag unboxings, and tips on how to save money on luxury, keep watching. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today's video is going to be another installment in my pre-love luxury series. If you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia. Every single week I upload new content on luxury beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. And I love making videos that help you guys be smart luxury shoppers and maybe save a little bit on your luxury. I love purchasing luxury items from a boutique when I can, but I also like getting a deal by buying pre-loved. And if you missed it, my last video was me reviewing my top favorite sites for buying pre-loved luxury, whether it be bags, clothes, accessories, you name it. And if you watch that video, you will know that one of my favorite sites is none other than Fashion Files. So this video is actually gonna be, it's gonna be a different one. It's gonna be sort of a mixture of a luxury shopping vlog, a bag unboxing, and also a helpful video with tips on how to save on luxury because I had the pleasure, totally not sponsored, of going to the Fashion File retail location, actually technically their headquarters, here in Carlsbad, California, where I'm visiting for a couple of weeks. I went on a little shopping trip as kind of like a birthday treat, I was shopping for bags. I'm going to be taking you guys along, showing you guys the retail location, the bags that they sell, giving you guys kind of like my thoughts. You can see all of the eye candy that I tried on. And then at the end, I'm going to unbox for you guys the bag that I picked up as a part of my shopping trip. And all along the way, I'm going to be giving you guys just some tips and thoughts about not only buying from Fashion File in general, but also just purchasing items pre-loved. So if you wanna hear all of my tips and come along on my fun little shopping trip, then keep watching. All right, friends, I'm taking you into the Fashion File showroom in Carlsbad. Before I get into the eye candy that I tried on and just some of my tips, I do wanna quickly comment on the in showroom experience. Right when you walk in, you really feel like you're in a luxury boutique. They have eye candy all over the walls. The associates are super friendly and greet you. Even the security guard was super nice and like took a photo of me because right when you walk in, there is a huge, super fun Hermes bag replica made of Legos, which I thought was a really fun touch. The whole experience is super easy and they make you feel so comfortable. You go in, you check in, you show them the 10 items or up to 10 items that you might wanna take a look at. They bring them to you and they kind of set up a little area just like if you were at a boutique. They really just let you have your time looking at the items, shopping, inspecting them, trying them on. On. You just kind of are at ease and are given the opportunity to really take a look at the products and you aren't rushed. And in many cases, I think that the service at the Fashion File showroom was actually better than a lot of luxury boutiques that I had been to. And I kind of feel that way about their customer service. And one of the things that I like about their company is that all of the inventory, all the products that they're selling, they have on premise. They've taken it in, they've inspected it, they've photographed it written all of the product descriptions and everything. And that's why you can go to these retail locations and they can just pull whatever they have from their inventory in that specific location. Also, if you don't have the opportunity to go to one of their showrooms, that's totally okay because the other thing that I like about Fashion File is just the fact that they have a very flexible return policy. You can return anything within, I think it's 14 or 15 days of purchasing it. So it's really like shopping from kind of like a department store full of pre-loved luxury. So I just wanted to mention that in the beginning, I thought it was a really, really fun experience. I would totally do it again. And I'll kind of chat a little bit more about that at the end of the video when we do the unboxing. But enough of that, let's get into the eye candy. I'm going to show you guys the products that I was shopping for. The first couple of bags that I tried on were all from Chanel. The first one being this Chanel Tweed vanity case. This one was actually in very, very good condition. And the reason why I picked this bag is because I thought the combo of the tweed and the python, I thought that was a really cool and unique mixture. And this sort of darker navy blue was a really beautiful neutral that I've actually been looking to add to my luxury collection. But you know what, friends? I was actually surprised at how much I actually didn't really like this bag. I decided to try on this bag, even though it was a little bit over my budget, because I thought maybe it would be just kind of spectacular. And I just kind of honestly wanted to take a look at it. I think what I learned from this is that I actually don't really like the feel of the Chanel tweed. Like it didn't really feel super substantial to me. I liked the Python trim, but the Chanel tweed, I really wasn't about it. It felt kind of weird and squishy 
also the strap on this bag, like the strap drop was rather short and not adjustable. So I felt like there wasn't enough versatility there. So at the end of the day, I was actually a little bit relieved because I thought I was gonna be super duper tempted to snag this bag. But at the end of the day, I actually didn't really like it. And that's kind of the beauty of either going to the boutique or shopping from a pre-loved site that allows returns. Just knowing that you have that security of the return policy if it's like not exactly what you expected. The next three bags that I tried on were also all from Chanel. You guys will probably be able to tell I was trying to see if I could find like a really good deal on a Chanel bag, maybe like a steal. And what I noticed is that the best deals on Chanel bags, not only on Fashion File, but I've also noticed this on other sites, happen to be those that are in the patent leather. I think that for whatever reason, most people want like caviar or lambskin, something a little bit more classic. So the next bag that I tried on, this is I think a vintage style in a beautiful, almost primary blue type of color with silver hardware. It's about the size of a medium flap. It is a very classic style, but it's not technically a classic flap. And going for something that isn't a classic flap and is more of like maybe an older style or a seasonal style, that's another tip that I have for you guys. If you want to get something that is classic, is wearable, but maybe you can find for a little bit less than some of the other price points that we see at Chanel, I actually found this bag incredibly tempting. It was one of the ones that tempted me the most. I think the thing that like was the deal breaker for this bag is that I was really looking for something that was a more vibrant color. When I saw this in person, I felt like the color was, it was beautiful, don't get me wrong, and several people in the store were like, ooh, that looks so pretty, that's such a beautiful bag, but it wasn't like the exact like pop of color that I was looking for, and I just feel like if you're gonna spend over $2,000 on a bag or what, whatever, if you're gonna spend even a couple hundred dollars on a bag, it should be exactly what you're looking for. This bag also had a pretty long strap drop that I wasn't a huge fan of, and it also had silver hardware, so I'm usually more of like a gold hardware kind of person and I already have a Chanel mini with silver hardware. So I didn't feel like this was the next bag that I really needed to add to my collection. I really was only willing to pick up another Chanel bag if I felt like it was gonna be something that I really, really liked that I didn't already have that was a really good deal. The other Chanel patent bag that I tried on is this really cute Chanel mini in this beautiful burgundy color. Now, one tip I have for you guys, if you are gonna be shopping for patent leather, not only from Chanel, but any luxury brand, is that if it is a vintage bag, something that you want to look out for in the description is whether or not there's any stickiness to it. I know that sounds so, so weird, but with Chanel, a lot of times the patent leather, it develops a little bit of a sticky texture. Now I've encountered this before with a bag that I've purchased and if you clean it and you air it out, usually the stickiness goes away, but it is something to just look out for in case that is something that bothers you or you're too nervous about it. When I tried on this bag, I did notice that there was like a little bit of stickiness to it. Once again, I've dealt with that before. I kind of know like how to treat the bag, but I think the biggest deal breaker with this one was once again, even though the color was really beautiful, I just felt like the burgundy wasn't really what I was going for. If I was gonna go for a Chanel bag, I wanted something that was gonna be a pop of color. And then also the hardware here was more of like a gunmetal ruthenium style tone of hardware. I think if this had been a burgundy with maybe like a really beautiful, like classic yellow gold, maybe even like the 24 karat plated ones that they used to make. I think that this would have tempted me a little bit more, but this actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think out of the three patent ones that I tried, this was the one that was the most expensive and I just like didn't feel like it was worth it. And the last Chanel bag that I tried on was also another patent leather mini. And this one was in this absolutely scrumptious like flamingo coral pink. I absolutely love this color. It just looked like a tasty little springtime candy. The sad thing about this though, friends, and I try to take some close-ups so that you can see, it's very hard to see it in the description online. It does say in the description that there's some like discoloration, but sometimes when you look at the photos on any of these sites, right, no matter how professional the photos are, sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell, like, is that a mark or is that, I don't know, just like part of the natural leather this bag had some discolorations on the back of the bag, but they also had some on the front. And that was the real deal breaker because there was a really good deal on this bag. But if there's gonna be any kind of marks on the front, 
then it's it's gonna bother me and it's gonna be a deal breaker. Comment down below if you've kind of experienced this with maybe any of your older Chanel bags, but I have noticed that for whatever reason, the patent leather bags, you'd think that they would repel a lot of stains. It does seem like some of the lighter color ones actually I don't know how this happens, but they do tend to absorb some colors. So that's just something for you guys to look out for. If you're shopping for Chanel, you can get a really good deal on the patent leather, but some things you wanna look out for are sort of like the discoloration and the stickiness. Enough of Chanel. The next two bags that I tried on were actually from Louis Vuitton. I was on the hunt for Louis Vuitton multicolor pieces. These are vintage items that you can't get anymore. So shopping pre-loved is the only way that you can go. And the first little bag that I tried on is this absolutely adorable Nano Speedy in the black multicolor. This was actually in fantastic condition. One of the things that you want to take a look at when shopping for vintage Louis Vuitton is the condition of the Vaquetta leather. It is going to patina, like pretty much all vintage items you're going to see, they have a patina, which is that darkening of the leather. Sometimes the patina doesn't end up looking all that good. Sometimes there's water stains, there might be excess oil, there might be discoloration, etc. And the patina on this bag was chef's kiss, like super even, really nice, exactly what I look for in a vintage Louis Vuitton item. Even though I actually found absolutely nothing wrong with this item, I didn't want to pull the trigger mostly because this particular item, the Nano Speedy, whether it's in the multicolor or not, is actually, it's a little bit overpriced. Like you have to really, really want this to justify the price of it. I think it's a little bit high for what I was looking for. I decided it wasn't the time. I think the other big thing too is that I actually have this bag from this era already, but in the classic monogram. And so my thoughts were, you know what, Sophia, you should probably just use the bag that you have. But I like to kind of use this opportunity to look at these items because I actually haven't like felt or seen or touched or inspected an item like this in person. It does kind of help me learn what to look for and what makes a good quality or good condition vintage item on another site. Take a look at this next bag that I tried on. This is actually a style that I recently discovered when shopping on another site for Louis Vuitton multicolor bags and I had never seen this style before. This is the Louis Vuitton multicolor Audrey bag. This is one of like the lesser known or at least for me like lesser seen styles and I think I think it only comes in this multicolor pattern or at least that is what I've seen. Comment down below, friends, if you have seen this bag anywhere else. You know, a lot of the multicolor pieces, because they are from a certain era, some of the styles, I think, like, they can look a little bit dated. Don't get me wrong, I love them, but they can look a little bit dated. And what I like about this piece is that you kind of get a flavor of that era, but... I don't find this piece to be too, too dated. I love the cool handle detail. It's a nice medium size. It's not too small, it's not too big, and you can usually find this bag for a really decent price compared to like the pochette accessoire or the Nano Speedy that I just tried on a second ago in this vlog. The reason that I decided not to get this one, and you could probably tell from the vlog clips here, friends, is that it actually was quite a bit creased. I think that if this bag is not stored properly, Properly, it's going to develop kind of like that perpetual creasing in the Louis Vuitton canvas. And I didn't really like that. I wanted something that was a little bit more structured and maybe that's just something for me to look out for if I'm shopping for this bag elsewhere. Maybe that's just like a natural thing that happens to this bag because the canvas is quite floppy, but then the handles are pretty chunky and heavy. Maybe that's why they don't make this style anymore. That being said, I still really like the style. I'm still kind of on the fence of whether or not the sort of chain-like handles would annoy me, but also, I've seen this bag sold for a lot cheaper than the one that I saw on Fashion File. They typically have pretty good prices, but I just knew that I could get probably a better quality item on a different site for less, so I decided to pass. And then the final bag that I tried on before I show you guys the one that I actually ended up getting, this one is from Dior. This is the Dior 30 Montaigne bag. This bag has been on the top of my list for quite some time now. I don't know why I haven't pulled the trigger. I think I'm just waiting to see what color I want. And it's a little bit tricky now because I don't see a lot of colors available in boutiques. So this is actually a really good bag to buy pre-love because 
you can kind of shop from some of the seasonal styles of past years if you don't just want like the basic black. This bag is just so visually appealing to me. Like look at the beautiful white. It's kind of like an off-white color. If you want something that is very classic, still fits a lot of things, is a little bit more understated and isn't so trendy like a total it bag, I think the Dior 30 Montaigne is a really good option. And this one at the Fashion File showroom was in excellent, excellent condition. I think what I realized though, I just wasn't ready to pull the trigger on getting a white one. I think what I realized is that because this bag comes in like that really smooth, what is it, box calf leather, I noticed there was like a teeny little mark on the front and this thing looked like new. It looked like this person had not, whoever owned it before had never even used it. I looked at that tiny little mark and I thought in my head, oh my gosh, I would baby this bag so, so much. And I think what I realized is that I either need to get like a crinkled leather version of this bag, which does exist, or I need to maybe go for a darker color. So I'm going to sort of wait and think, do I just want to get it in black or do I want to wait for maybe a more interesting seasonal color? All right, friends, I saved the best for last. This was the eighth and final bag that I tried on. This is the one that I ended up getting. I am going to do a little bit of an unboxing now, and then we're going to chat about the bag. Mine did come with a dust bag. I bet some of you guys can guess what brand this is from because this has been a favorite of mine as of late it is from Celine and so let me show you guys what I got Ta -da! so this is the Celine classic box bag this is in the small size I have the gold tone hardware this is a combination of stingray and then the classic sort of smooth calf leather on the sides and also in the interior. If you guys are not familiar with this bag, it is still sold by the brand, but it's kind of like an older style from the Phoebe Philo area. It's very classic. Now they kind of have that new style with the little like Triumph logo emblem on the front. But you know what, friends? I still really like the Phoebe Philo era bags. I think they're really special, very classic. If you are new here, I actually do have a Celine Classic box bag in the medium size in the white lizard leather that I unboxed on my channel a couple months ago. I also got that one from Fashion File for like an absolute steal. And ever since then, I've just been obsessed with the Celine box bag and I've been contemplating getting it in like another size, another color. And when I saw this on the site, I, my jaw dropped. I was like, I need to see that bag. And when I saw it in person, I was like, oh my goodness. I'm one of those people, like as soon as I see something that I really like, that I feel is really me, I instantly, know it like my heart sang I just thought this was like one of the most beautiful spectacular classic bags I've ever seen I know I'm gushing over this bag but I just love it so so much I love the beautiful effect that you get from the stingray but it's still very neutral very wearable the other thing is that there's like absolutely nothing wrong with this bag like there's no tarnishing here on the hardware the strap is perfect there's no scratches or corner wear or anything because it's stingray it literally looks like the person who had this before did not even wear it so it was an incredible deal i think this retailed for about 2500 2600 which is i think less than just a standard non-exotic leather box bag from Celine if you were to buy it from the boutique. So you can get some really, really good deals on Celine. And that's kind of like a tip that I have for you guys. If you're looking to save a little bit, consider going for these like more classic older styles. If they already have come out with like a new version, you can still kind of get the same vibes, but you're gonna get it for like half a third, sometimes a fourth of the price than what you would get at the boutique. Like this would have been thousands of dollars at the boutique. The other reason that I really like this is that I'm kind of at a point in my luxury bag collection where I'm starting to probably sell a couple bags and narrow things down. I already have a lot of classic pieces. So whatever I add to my collection, I do want it to be a little bit special, interesting. And so that's what I really liked about the Stingray. I've really never seen anything like this. I'm super duper happy with this. I'll have to do a Celine box bag review for you guys now that I have both the medium 
and the small size. All right, friends, I hope that you enjoyed this pseudo luxury shopping vlog slash pre-loved bag unboxing. I had a ton of fun. I think some of my biggest takeaways here are number one, if you are shopping for something pre-loved and it is available in a boutique, if it's a current item, going to that boutique and sort of trying that bag on first or even getting a feel for kind of like the leather, you know, in the example of the Chanel tweed, it wasn't really a material that I had a lot of experience with. Going to the boutique and kind of get a feel for those types of bags and maybe the style and the size that you're looking for so that you really know that's exactly what you want and that's going to help you search for exactly what you're looking for when you go to buy a pre-love. The other thing is that if it's like a vintage bag, like the Louis Vuitton multicolor that you can't try on in the boutique, I think that shopping from a site like Fashion File that has a really good return policy can kind of help with that because if you get it and it's not what you expected, you could always return it if there's kind of like a little flaw that you didn't notice because it is a vintage bag or something that was discontinued. You just have peace of mind that you can send it back. I also think that it's good to just even the bags that aren't listed as excellent condition to kind of go and take a look at those so you know what types of flaws to look for, right? With the Audrey bag, for example, I had no idea that there was gonna be sort of like that heavy creasing and that was something that the bag was prone to doing. And if I had looked at more examples, maybe that would have been something that was on my radar. And if I had ordered from Fashion File and I hadn't gone into the store, I could have always returned that bag and I would have been just fine. Lastly, if you find something that is like a super duper good deal, like in the case of the little pink Chanel bag that I tried on, it's probably for a reason. Make sure that you really read the description super carefully. And if you still can't understand why it's such a good deal, maybe consider contacting customer service and just kind of clarify the description or maybe anything, anything that might be questionable for you because it is a lot of money to be spending. And even if there are returns, it's just better to kind of avoid that situation from the start. That is all I got for you today, friends. Now it is your turn. Sound off in those comments down below and let me know what you thought. What do you think of the bag that I picked out? What do you think about the eye candy, about the bags that I tried on in the Fashion File showroom? I would love to know if you guys have purchased from Fashion File before, if there are any other sites where you like to buy luxury pre-love. Also, let me know what other kind of videos about fashion, bags, pre-love you would like to see in the upcoming weeks because I definitely have more in store for that. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel for more videos videos like this and tips on shopping for luxury. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.